So we'll start and learn how to write Python scripts in a standalone text editor and run that. This is how historically Python programs were written and run. This is how I programmed almost entire career where you take your code, type in a text editor, save it and run it on a console. And that's still done in many ways. You do this, especially once you say, I have figured out my workflow. I know exactly what code to run. You will take those steps, put it in a text editor, and then you can run this automatically. You don't have to click each cell and run it. You can run it automatically on a schedule or you can run it as in a server and so on. So this would be a good way to learn how to do this. So first step, we want to write a script. And this script would be any Python code. You can just write any Python code. So we'll do this step by step. First, I want all of you to open your text editor. So we'll go and open your text editor. So let me open my text bit and you can see a blank text file. Text editors are important because they allow you to type text without any formatting, etc. And that's what the code expects. So either you have, if you have Notepad plus plus, open that. If you have TextMate, open that, or any other editor, and we'll type some Python code. So let's type print hello world. Just a basic thing. Let's see how to run this code from a text editor. So go ahead, open a text editor, type print hello world, and then we want to save this file. So go to file.save, and you can save it anywhere on a computer. I'm saving it on my downloads folder. So I will so show, go to downloads, and I'm going to save this file as get distance.py. We're going to add more code to it, but the name of the file we want to save is get distance.py. .py is important. That will ensure that Python recognizes that this is a Python file. All the Python files have .py extension. So we have some Python code. Let's run it. We need the Python interpreter to run this. So we'll open the command prompt. On Windows, you can open Anaconda prompt. On Mac and Linux, we'll open a terminal. So we open the terminal and we'll activate our environment so we can use all the packages that we've installed. So we'll activate the Python foundation environment. Next step is to find the folder where you have saved this file. So in my case, I've saved it in the downloads folder. So I'm going to use the cd command. cd is for change directory. Same command for Windows or Mac or Linux. cd, and then you give the path to the folder. So in my case, I have saved this in the downloads folder. So I'm going to go to downloads. You can also use tab to autocomplete. You can type capital D, tab it, and it should autocomplete to desktop or downloads wherever you have saved this. Once you are in the downloads, you can run the command. You can say python get distance.py. So we are, this command says, use the Python interpreter that is installed, run this file. So we say python get distance.py. And if you run this, if you see hello world as the output, you will successfully run your file. We have a text file, and we have a way to run the code in the text file. What if you want to change it? So we can say, oh, I want to change something. So I will go to my file, change something, press save, come to my terminal, up arrow key, run this again. Now it says hello class. Right, so you can now edit the code in a text editor, save it, come back to the terminal, and run it to see the output. Let's type some real code. So from your course material, we're going to do this code snippet to compute the distance between two cities using GeoPy. So we can type this code, copy paste this, and I'm going to take this and put it in the code. Let's just save it. And now when we run it, the Python environment will import the GeoPy library and call this to compute the distance. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and run this. And you can see now it prints the ellipsoid distance between those two cities using GeoPy. One thing you'll notice it if you run your Python code in this environment, it will always run from the first line till the end. That means if you caught an error at line 100 and you had done a lot of heavy data processing till 999, you'll have to run the whole thing again to once you fix the error. So that's why this kind of environment is not really good for interactive computing, working with large data sets. So you use Jupyter environment that allow, you can run line by line or cell by cell. All the previous results are saved, so you don't have to rerun the thing. Once you have it, my typical workflow is if I want to automate something, I would develop this in a Jupyter notebook. Once I have it, I'll copy the code in a text editor, have a whole workflow, and then run it using a terminal if I need to. And that will allow you to 
run this without any interaction. Now you have a command. So you can say, whenever I run this command on my computer, python get distance.py, it executes this Python file. So you could take this command and put it in Windows Scheduler or on Linux and Mac, you have something called a cron tab, which executes commands on a schedule. So you can say every Monday morning, 6 a.m., run this command on my computer. And that means without you being present, as long as the computer is on, it'll run this script on Monday morning, 6 a.m. And that means now you can say every day, I want to download this weather data, do some processing, generate this raster and email this to somebody. You can write Python code to do all of that, put it in a script and I have a command that executes automatically and sends that email to people. Right, and you have Python libraries for doing everything, downloading data, processing, sending emails, you have Python libraries. So this is the workflow you'll use if you want to automate stuff. Or if you want to so say, I have 100 files, I just want to just you know run this, not in a browser environment, but on a terminal, this is how you do it. Today, majority of programs are written this way. Most of the professional coders will work in this environment. They have a text editor, they write code, you'll execute this in a terminal, you'll get the result. So I just wanted to introduce yet another way that you can run Python code from your Jupyter Notebooks. You have a Jupyter Notebook with your entire code. So let's say we have this notebook and I want to run this on the terminal now. So as I have developed the code, I don't want to copy paste it. You can say file, save and execute notebook as an executable script. So when you click this, it's going to save this as a .py file. And now I have a .py file and I can say Python. 01 variables.py. And I run this, you can see it prints, it executes the whole file. So that's another workflow. You develop your workflow in a notebook, download this as a .py script, and then you can execute this in a terminal.